Hello everyone, I'm Justine Simons and I am the Deputy Mayor for Culture and the Creative Industries in London and I am really delighted to welcome you to this virtual event. So today is a very special day because we're making a very significant announcement. One that is huge for Barking and Dagenham and massively important for London too, especially for our hard hit creative industries. It will also be game changing for the UK and for our international standing. Now, we'll be revealing the name of our new owner of what is set to become the largest film studios in London, in Dagenham. And in a moment, you'll see a short video to reveal it all. Then we're going to have a short discussion with our great panel, um, and we'll hear questions from members of the public and also from across the creative industries. Um, so, before we do, uh, I would like to reveal uh, two short films which will reveal our exciting news today. Hi, Darren Rodwell here, leader of Barking and Dagenham Council. I'm on top of the cube here at London East in Dagenham East, obviously in Dagenham. Four years ago, I stood in this very spot showing the mayor how we wanted to build Dagenham Film Studios. I'm pleased to say that four years on, not only do we have data science and engineering on this site, the final piece of the jigsaws here. It is a momentous occasion because actually we're now going to announce who our partner is when it comes to the largest film media centre in London. I'm really proud that we've been able to find a partner that believes in our residents, that believes in the values of Barkin and Dagenham. The company that has a global reputation, a company that values people and invests in those people. So I'm really proud to say that our partners moving forward to make London's Hollywood is Hackman Capital. And now over to a good friend of Barkin and Dagnum to introduce you to the winning bidder, Mr. Idris Elba. In every color, of every pixel, of every shot, of every film, we celebrate the excitement of storytelling. And for over 100 years, the story of Barkin and Dagenham has shone its own bright light for the community, for London, and for the nation. Making things has constantly run through the veins of this community, a place of strength, equality, and opportunity. And the desire to work and be part of something big thrives on in East London's diverse and talented populace. Now, with one of the largest and most exciting studio developments ever in the UK, making film and television content is set to write yet another chapter in this illustrious story. As London's Hollywood, this new complex is the jewel in the crown for the London Mayor's cultural corridor, bringing with it a vast array of jobs, training, education, and economic stimulus both inside and outside the studios. The power behind this project are Hackman Capital Partners and the MBS Group, who together have the largest, best-in-class studio and media portfolio in the world. With over 300 stages and 3 billion in studio assets, they have an unrivaled track record in revitalizing real estate, uniquely centering developments around the community. Renowned for this expertise, this financial standing and this proven positive impact, Hackman Capital and MBS are the number one choice to make this studio, which in turn will make so much more. The new skills based here will lead the way technically and creatively in telling future stories through film and TV. And of course, in Dagenham, because this is the story where things are built and things are made. Rooted in history and poised for growth, this community and Hackman Capital Partners and the MBS Group have another thing to be proud of. Eastbrook Studios, London. Made in Dagenham. So really exciting news indeed. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our esteemed panel. We have the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, Michael Hackman, who is the founder and CEO of Hackman Capital, Jason Harriton, who is Chief Studio and Retail Estate Officer from MBS Group, Councillor Darren Rodwell from Barkin and Dagenham, 
who has been the driving force behind this project, Adrian Wooten, Chief Executive of Film London and also of the British Film, Co uh, Film Commission, Claire, Claire Simons, uh, who is Acting Chief Executive of Barking and Dagenham Council. So a very, very big welcome to my guests for this online question and answer session. And in, in particular, I'm really uh, delighted uh, that we have live from LA, uh, Michael um, and Jason, who have uh, got up at 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, so we are especially so grateful to you. Um, so, Michael, I'd like to come to you first and say, you know, we are so thrilled uh, about your commitment to this fantastic project. I wonder if you would say a few words about your vision for the new studios in Dagenham. Well, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you, Justine, and thank you to the Honorable Mayor uh, for joining us today. Uh, we're a big fan of yours in Los Angeles, so you have fans everywhere. Um, I'd like to just, before I answer that question, just uh, give a quick thank you to a few people that made this happen, uh, and the thanks to the entire civic and business community of Barkingham and Dagingham for supporting us. Uh, I want to thank a few people at Be First, uh, Pat Hayes, Stephen Hershouse, and Ed Sheets, um, Lisa D, uh, Film LBBD, uh, Adrian Wooden, who's there, and Claire Simons, uh, Chris Berry, who's not on this call, but he was very instrumental, and last to our council leader, Darren Rodwell. So for those of you who may not know Darren, he is an absolute force of nature. So uh, his hard work and perseverance really helped make this project a reality, which leads me to answering your question to say that we're very pleased to say that we have a shared vision uh, with Barking and, Dang the Barking and Dagenham area. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, when we're done, uh, upon completion, Eastbrook Studios London will be one of the largest state-of-the-art and preeminent, you know, full-service film studio and television facilities in London. And the campus will have, upon completion, 500,000 square feet and 12 large sound stages. So our preliminary design is done and completed, and we look forward to initiating our development the first quarter of next year. So we're looking forward to making this a reality. Thank you so much. It just seems that our kind of vision, our values and the stars are all aligning around this fantastic project. And we are so excited uh, to be working with you uh, in the years to come. Um, so now I want to go to Jason. Uh, and Jason, you have got huge experience in this area. Um, I wonder if you could share your thoughts on the project. Sure. Well, thank, thank you, Justine. And thank you, everyone, for, um, for this opportunity. It's something speaking personally that uh you know in a past life as uh as the head of global production operations and real estate for netflix uh the uk was a main focus because as uh, adrian and many of the other fantastic people that can help the, make these projects a reality throughout greater london uh the the supply uh drastically uh, underserves versus the uh the demand and so that's a good thing but as the creative industry has really taken off uh, even more so in the last few years globally uh, the UK being one of the major production hubs, it's been very difficult to have enough infrastructure to support. And so the, the natural growth has always seemed to be um, growing into East London and that logic of it. So for us to be a part of a project that is, as we would say, shovel ready and the opportunity to really create uh, infrastructure uh, in, immediately in, in our world to service the productions that are getting greenlit and written today is something really exciting. And uh, we, we look forward to actually seeing it just be a kind of a beginning step in a larger uh, strategic plan to see the growth in the area uh, and in the sector at large. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, it's so, so exciting. Now, um, over to the mayor. The mayor here is a passionate champion of culture, and he has been committed to this project right from the start, uh, back in 2016, when he commissioned a feasibility study to get the whole thing moving. Uh, and this year, he persuaded government to unlock some funding for the studios, and he gave planning permission to get building started. So it is my great pleasure to welcome Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, to say a few words about why this is so important to London and the UK. Well, thank you, Justine, for that introduction and for the vitally important work you're doing right now as London's deputy mayor for uh, culture. As Justine touched upon in her introduction, the last year has been incredibly difficult for our cultural 
and uh, creative industries and COVID-19 continues to cast a uh, long shadow. However, as you've heard from Michael and uh, Jason, we have some issues. And this is a time that we desperately need good news stories to lift our spirit. And this is absolutely uh, one of them. We are talking about a massive investment worth hundreds of millions of pounds that will create around 1,200 jobs, boost the economy of East London and deliver fantastic education and training opportunities for local This is a lot of confidence in our film and television industry in this fantastic part and in the future of our whole city as well. I want to pay tribute to everyone involved in making it happen from Parking and Dagenham Council to our friends at Hackman Capital Partners. I know there's something else happening in USA today, but I'm really pleased Jason might joined us this morning. I also want to thank, of course, Phil. This project has only been made possible thanks to your hard work, commitment, and vision, and you deserve all the glory. But I also want to acknowledge, in particular, the leadership of my good friend Darren, Councillor Darren Rodman. His passion, his parents really driven this and he knows better than anyone this means for local communities and how they stand to benefit. This is out of a special agonem and I couldn't be more delighted for local residents to be able to boast about having London's largest film studio right here on their doorstep. This investment will create a pipeline for London talent, ensuring that East Londoners who want to work in film and television have a great shot at fulfilling their potential. And who knows, maybe even becoming the stars of tomorrow, like Idris Elba. This sector is crucial to London's economy, and this world-class development is set to contribute £35 million per year, as well as firmly establishing London's reputation as a global capital for film and television. I'm confident that this industry and these world-class studios can help to power our economic recovery from this pandemic. As Justine said, one of my top priorities as mayor is to support our cultural businesses and institutions, not only by helping them through this crisis, but by ensuring that they're on the strongest possible footing to flourish and thrive long into the future. We're already seeing major productions filmed in our city from the Batman and the next Fantastic Beasts film to Top Gear and EastEnders. And there is no good reason why the next box office sensation can't be made right here in Dagenham. Let me end friends by saying this. The cultural sector is an integral part of our economy, bound up with our identity as Londoners. Culture is in the DNA of our city, and London simply wouldn't be London without our world-leading actors, artists, dancers, comedians, writers, musicians, and producers. Our film and television, television industry in particular is precious to our society because the stories told on screen help to break down barriers and shape who we are as a modern, diverse, and inclusive country. Film and television also offers escapism in dark times, narratives of unity in the face of hate and hope when we need it the most. These new studios will show the world that London is open to creativity and in dark times, they'll provide light, cameras and action. So thank you and congratulations once again to everyone involved in securing this investment. Thank you so much, Sadiq, um, and thank you for everything that you do uh, as a passionate champion of culture in London. Um, I'm going to ask you a question that's come through uh, through our system, and it's from Sarah Dance, who is the chair of the Creative Estuary. And she has a question for you, Sadiq, which is, 
Uh, she says, it's very interesting to see the great ambitions of Dagenham Film Studios. How does this fit within your wider ambitions and vision for the Thames SG Production Corridor and with specific film sector developments across the whole of the Thames SG area? Yes, a cracking question. Thanks for the question. So, look, firstly, today's announcement, and again, thanks again to not just Darren, uh, Adrian, but also our friends from across the pond as well, our cousins. Uh, this is a great confidence boost. Uh, in London, in our film and uh, TV industry, but it's also of international significance um, because this will be the heart of a new hub for film and uh, television. But you're right to remind all of us that we need to reassert, reassert the bold vision of our city and our country. And the Thames Estuary Production Corridor, for those not familiar with this great part of our country, is part of that bold vision for our country and a concentration of creative uh, production and it just reminds me with the question Justine we've not just got this uh, fantastic new uh, film studio in Dagenham uh, uh, soon opening we've got the Perfleet film studios just down the uh, the, the corridor in Thurrock Essex and uh, we've got of course of course the Ashfield International Studios in uh, Kent and what we're keen to do is work uh, with our uh, uh, partners just outside of London but also with government as well and others to leverage in as much in, as much investment as we can to enrich uh, this uh, Thames Estuary uh, corridor. We've managed to persuade the government of its important uh, importance, and it's really important we work together uh, to really um, have a vibrant creative industry sector on this fantastic uh, corridor along the Thames. Thank you. I think East London is going to be a real creative powerhouse for London uh, in the coming years. And of course, we've got East Bank, uh, the big cultural and education districts in the Olympic Park too. So it's all very, very exciting. Um, now, thank you, Sadiq. Um, I'm going to come to Darren Rodwell now. Uh, Darren, congratulations to you. I know that you have worked tirelessly on this project. Um, on a scale of one to ten, how pleased are you? 11. How can I say? You could never go to 10, could you? In Barking and Dagenham, we're always 11. We're always trying for the best. And uh, we've got this. We've got the world's best facilitation of stages and infrastructure. MBS Group uh, with Michael, Michael Cap Hackman and Jason, uh, they're, ju they're just fantastic people. Uh, when we first met in the Cube, uh, well, a few months ago now, uh, we sat there. I could understand the American English and he could understand the Dagnum English. And there was a relationship built together in trust and respect. And it's incredible. He called me a force of nature. I take that as a compliment because not only am I a force of nature for what this borough has as aspiration, but actually, this is the borough of hope, the home of positive energy. And there's nothing more positive than a story to be told, whether it's a poem, whether it's a bedtime story, whether it's TV or film. It happens here. We are the home of change. We were the place that brought equality. We were the place that stopped slavery. And of course, we were the place that won the World Cup for the country. So we are a place of change. And I'm really proud as the leader of this community, the aspiration from this community to change the future. And once we were known for Fords, now we're gonna be known for films. And it's all made here in Dagenham. Yeah, it's fantastically exciting. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so, Darren, I'm going to um, come to you with a question that's come through. In fact, about 50 people asked the same question. So this is one that is clearly top of mind for the people of Barking and Dagenham. And the question is, how will local people uh, get a chance to work at the studios? And in particular, uh, what will be the education and training opportunities available to them? So what's really exciting Darren. today is you may see I've got a green screen behind me. Uh, I'm not auditioning for the next Bond or maybe the fat controller in Thomas the Tank Engine. I'm not quite sure which one I look for the most. What I'm going for here is actually looking at great facilities that our young people in Barking and Dagenham can achieve in the Barking and Dagenham College. It's a fantastic facility that Idris himself came to. And I need to thank him for doing the voiceover um, because again, as a son of the borough in the respect that he worked in Falls, uh, he can see the change and the aspiration it brings. 
everything is about people in Barking and Dagenham and we have managed to get an agreement. Michael knew that. In fact, one of the first things he talked about with me was the Los Angeles riots and what he did for those communities that were the most vulnerable. And that was straight away, that was a connection. Because actually, I'm proud to say that in this deal, he has already said that there will be a figure of a million pound put into training for people that want to come into this creative sector. And that's a fantastic start to an ongoing legacy. And I know that together we will change hundreds, if not thousands of lives for the better. And it starts here in London East Dagenham. Thank you, uh, Darren. It's so exciting. I mean, there's so many exciting possibilities for a career in this industry. And I think, uh, you know, often it's hard to know where to start. And I think, you know, all the work that's happening in Dagenham and the commitment of the team coming in, I think will really open up those opportunities for folks in Barking and Dagenham and across the capital. So now I'm going to go to Adrian Wooten, a CEO of Film London and also CEO of the British Film Commission, who is a tireless champion of film in this city and around the country. And I've got a question for you this time. Uh, it's from it's an industry question from Carrie Fitzgerald of Silver Mountain Productions. Now, she is a Dagenham born film financier and producer whose mum was Down Rodwell's dinner lady at school. There you go. And uh, Carrie asks, like most economic sectors, the film industry is experiencing a lot of turmoil at the moment. Does Adrian think that demand for this scale of production centre will be there in two years from now? Thank you, Justine. And before I answer the question, I just wanted to add my congratulations to Darren, all the team at um, Embarking and Dagenham, the Be First team, who we've had the pleasure of working with very closely, and to welcome Michael and his company and, and welcome Jason. It's fantastic to have such brilliant new industry expertise yeah, it being injected into into Barking, into Dagenham, into, into East London, and indeed for the benefit of the UK. I think this really is a, a game-changing project. And um, to come back to the question, uh, and thanks to Kerry for asking that, um, yes, of course, uh, film and television, like uh, the rest of the creative sector, has been deeply affected um, by the pandemic, cinemas, uh, cinema exhibition in particular. But I'm delighted to say that um, actually, film and television production was the first, really, to start the road to recovery in terms of the creative sector. Before the pandemic, we were leading the way. The, the demand for content um, in London and the whole of the UK, we were growing more or less twice the, the rate of the, the entire um, sector, uh, all other industrial sectors. We're a multi-billion pound industry. And actually, since July, we've gone back to work. And right now, whilst lockdown is going on, film and television production is going apace. The demand curve is rocketing for our goods and services. And as Jason pointed out, the issue is not so much the demand, the content demand, because of the talent here in London, the skills, is we need more studio space. We need some more studio space to meet that demand. We estimate that we could double the actual inward investment, the money spent in the UK coming here over the next five years. But we need the studios to be able to provide that space and the talent and the skills and the training and the people to come and work in them, which is why this project is so critical, not just for East London, not just for London as a whole, but for the UK. This is a fantastically exciting opportunity. I believe that we're not just an industry for the present, we're an industry for the future. So yes, not two years, but 10 years and beyond is the opportunity that we have here today with the fact with, with building 12 new sound stages. That's, that's hundreds, that's thousands of film and television programs over the next few years and thousands of job opportunities for the diverse communities of London and particularly for East London. So I salute what's going on enormously and I thank the mayor for his ongoing support of us and, and the film and television sector because I really believe we are the industry of the future and this project sets an anchor for that really exciting future. Um, thank you so much, Adrian, for kind of setting out the scale of the opportunity, really, that uh, this is going to be for London. Um, and congratulations, too, on all the work that you've done to get film and TV production back up and running in London. I know that now we're 80%, 85% back up and running, which in the face of 
a pandemic is an extraordinary achievement. Um, and I am really confident that film will, under your leadership, film will drive our recovery in London. So now we're going to go, uh, we're going to have a question now for Claire Simons, who is the CEO of Barking and Dagenham Council. Um, Claire, a question for you from Karen West Wiley from Barking Enterprise Centre. Uh, and she says, what might be the opportunities for small businesses to get involved in the film studios during the building and then post building when the studio is up and running? Claire. Thank you, Justin, and uh, thank you, Karen, for the question. Obviously, as many businesses as possible to, to benefit from this project. Uh, the council already has a very successful in-house list called Film, film LBB. It's already been made, and that some local are already supplying the film and TV industry, so we've got something to build upon. We've been encouraging local businesses uh, who are interested in opportunities to work with the new film studios to register their interest. And so far, I think we've already got over 100 businesses uh, registered and obviously look forward to hearing from many more. And we're going to try and come up with ways where we can match those businesses to the opportunities as they come up um, as this project actually starts. For me, though, and amongst all the excitement of today, I think what this deal really shows is that Barking and Dagenham is open for business and is a great place to do business with. Um, over the last few years, under Darren's leadership, we've radically transformed the way that the council works. So it's better, better place to fulfil the ambition of our communities and deliver inclusive growth. And we've done this by being far more entrepreneurial and commercial. Our wholly owned regeneration company, Be First, was instrumental in securing this deal. They helped the council buy the land, gain planning permission and engaged in the operator market in a way that most local authorities wouldn't uh, have been able to pull off. Um, so I think that gives an indication, indication to you about how we do things in this borough and how we work with business. So in short, I think there's going to be a great deal of opportunities for all our local businesses to benefit from this fantastic deal. Thank you so much, Claire. Fantastic. So our next question uh, is coming to Michael or Jason or Michael and Jason um, and it's from John Lewis who is the MD and owner of SOG Limited who ran the East London site for many years and put, purchased it from Sanofi. Now his question is how important do you think the local population, colleges and business community will be in making this project a success and how will local people be trained so that they're well placed to get the jobs that this will generate. So that is a question to Michael and then Jason. Michael. I'll let Jason start first. I'll, I'll let him start and I'll finish. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> sure. No, thank you for the question. Uh, incredibly important. Uh, so obviously uh, the colleges and, uh, and the community itself, um, the, the trades and the skills, uh, for us, it's, it's incredibly important. The, the business happens as, um, as Adrian explained uh, very quickly, and it, is, it has a multiplier effect throughout the community. So it's not just the roles, which are, uh, there's quite, they're quite numerous on set, uh, working directly with the productions, but also behind the scenes, managing the studio, the vendors and the, uh, the services that are actually supporting production, uh, which the, the, and the multiplier being, uh, as Adrian is in some cases, uh, 10 times what the, uh, the initial is. So there's a lot of, uh, of local assistance required to mount uh, these projects that are coming in, um, coming in in, in, uh, in a short amount of time, trying to do a, quite a lot. So for us, uh, I think it's important we talk about our commitment over uh, for our training program. And it was mentioned previously by uh, Councilor Rodwell, but our commitment for the training program is also based on the fact that we're trying to create access and paths to be able to provide these necessary solutions uh, from the local community. And we've, you know, knock, knock on wood, we've been successful in other, um, other projects in production hubs where we've had to come into the community around a new studio development. And, uh, and really, once we provide access to the great people in the community, we, we do see it happen fairly quickly. So we're very optimistic and excited. Thank you, yeah, Jason. I would just add to I would just add to that real quickly that we're very proud of our track record of being a stakeholder in all of the communities that we work in. And we've been very active um, both in work and deed and in financial contribution to bring diversity to our industry as well. So we focused a lot of money into programs that will help train uh, individuals, help uh, give them access to opportunities uh, that's something that's very, very important to us. 
And when I first met the uh, first met Darren, that was important to him as well. I think we connected on that, uh, as I recall, you know, on that objective. So part of what we're doing in our contributions are basically a seed grant. We hope to continue to grow those programs, you know, over time because we think it's really important to get to the youth and get to young people in high school and uh, get them to understand that there's an opportunity in these creative industries and that they they can do it. And that's part of what we're contributing our um, money towards and our efforts towards. Thank you, Michael. And Darren, I know this is a, a subject that is really close to your heart. Um, how important is this for you? Uh, it's everything, actually. To, let's be honest about it. We all want our children to do the best in life. And they, you want them to do better than you did. Now, I'm proud to come from this borough, but I know the education of this borough wasn't where it needed to be for the majority of us to get the outcome we wanted. I know that um, the blue collar work was fine. It was well paid. It was, it was respectable, but it weren't aspirational. Put my teeth back in. And that's what's been so great about finding partners who will invest from other parts of the world into this borough. But more importantly than that, it's also important to have a mayor that believes in our people, in our young people, in the changing demographic of the area, in making sure that opportunities are there for all. And again, my thanks has to go to the mayor for it was four years and one month when we stood on top of the cube together and I pointed out what I wanted to do. And from that moment on, he backed what we were doing. He believed in what we were doing and he's helping us transform where we are going. On that site alone, two billion pounds worth of investment is coming in. This is the final piece of the jigsaw that will be investment into our community of Barking and Dagnum. It will be a game changer. It's incredible. And I'm so proud that we're able to do it together. And we didn't do it alone. Again, Michael and Jason, they're part of the future but I've got to respect the past as well. So John, SOG group, the Liverpool boys and girls, they were part of the journey with us, all the officers that have done the work, but most importantly, the residents of Barking and Dagenham that showed the aspiration for that change, that gear up. You know, Idris made a statement once, everyone has talent, they don't have the opportunity. Well, in Barking and Dagenham, you're gonna be given that opportunity because we are one borough, one community, and we'll leave no one behind. Fantastic. Thank you, Darren. Um, now, we've got a couple more questions, and it's going to move on. Uh, the next question is from Johnny in Dagenham, uh, and I think this would probably be best answered by Michael. Uh, and his question is, why Dagenham? Well, you know, why not? No, I, the Dagenham is great. I think that what we saw was a, um, an opportunity to um, walk into a project that had been pre-planned and shovel ready to go. So that was very exciting to us. Uh, we had an incredibly supportive uh, civic and business community that was welcoming us to this city and um, helping to pave the way for, um, you know, a rapid development. And as Adrian said, that uh, uh, there's a shortage of stages right now. So to keep business here in the UK, we need to build stages so we can start construction at the beginning of next year, which is a really, really important component to this. Uh, I think the other aspects that were uh, really interesting is, you know, just having uh, obviously a very supportive leader in Darren. And, you know, I, I'm very encouraged by the cultural component of it. You know, the the move to the creative, the creative talent seems to be going east, you know, in the city, and that's where it seems to be thriving. So, you know, having an opportunity to um, participate in that and be able to create an anchor that, you know, further cements the creative um, potential of this location in this area, I think is very exciting to us. Thank you, Michael. Now, our final question to, is... Our final question is I was going to say, to, it also happens to be very sorry. close to uh, the city as well. You know, it happens to be very close to the city as well, and you've got a, 
uh, a train station, and you've got you just got a great community. Sorry, bit of delay there here. Uh, thank you so much, Michael. Uh, so now our final question is to Darren. Uh, so now we've made this exciting announcement. What happens next? Well, we take our jackets off and we get uh, digging. Uh, we start putting these stages up. We find other opportunities to invest in. I mean, we are, we are the borough of hope. We are the borough of uh, the home of positive energy. And there's so much going on here. The homes we're building for people so they can have their families and make sure that the education they need is linked into that with 93% of our schools being good to outstanding. That links into having a great college like Barking and Dagenham College with all these facilities where great people have uh, come from and made a world of difference. And at the same time, we've got CU London, we've got Screen Skills, we're talking to the BFI. You know, there's whole groups of partners now that want want to invest in this particular project, but it grows, it grows because with investment comes more investment. And that's why we're the borough of hope, because actually we are a beacon of change. We had a fantastic history in being the powerhouse for London and actually the country when it came to what we did. You know, now we've got to get ready for the 21st century. We've got to be ready for those jobs in all the industries. And I know that Michael and Jason, they're not just words, they're investment. And actually we're already talking about what else we can do together. And that will be really good for the community of Barking and Dagnum. But most of all, I need to thank the community of Barking and Dagnum. I need to thank you for believing that your families deserve the best because I can tell you in Hackman Capital and MBS and the Mayor, we have the best in London. Thank you, Darren, thank you. Um, so I'm afraid uh, that's all we've got time for this morning. Um, firstly, thank you so much to all our panelists for a fantastic session this morning. Thank you to everyone who submitted a question to the panel, some great questions. I'm sorry we didn't have a chance to answer them all, but if your question wasn't answered, Rest assured, our colleagues at Barkin and Dagenham Council will address them via the Council's website. So that's it, a historic day for Barking and Dagenham and East London and a massively important one for London and the UK's creative economy <clears throat> and for our international standing too. We know how important culture is to our city and thanks to the brilliant civic and business leaders we have heard from today, culture will absolutely drive London's recovery from this pandemic. Finally, a big thank you to Michael and Jason, especially for getting up at 2am in the morning. Many congratulations to you and we look forward to working really closely with you as this exciting project develops. Um, and now we're going to move into some different chat rooms. Uh, I know there's some media here who want to ask us some specific questions. Uh, so thank you all so much for joining us today. Goodbye. Thanks everyone. Thanks Michael. Thanks Jason. Stay safe. And don't forget to vote. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Good luck today. I did. I did. Thank you all. Thank you.